Hi, I'm Jason and welcome to a quick tutorial on how to rip your Blu-rays or DVDs to your computer for free. So why would we want to do this? Well, personally, I like to transfer my movies to my Android pad and my wife's iPad for when we're sat on a plane bored going on holiday. I also like to transfer my movies to my NAS device so that I can access them from my home network through my TV without the need to have all the messing around with loading discs on a Blu-ray player. And yes, before you say it, I am becoming more lazy with age. You are allowed to do this provided you own the original Blu-ray movies or DVD movies. All you're doing is simply moving the movie to the desired playback format. So provided you don't sell or share the movie, you shouldn't be stepping on any toes. So what do we need in order to accomplish this? Well, Although I did say this process is free to accomplish with the software, you'll need a Blu-ray player stroke writer for your PC. You can get an internal one like mine, looks something like this, or an external one that plugs into a USB socket, which looks something like this. If you do go for the USB socket external drive, be sure to get one that is USB 3, as the whole process will become a lot faster. OK, so that's the hardware out of the way. Let's look at what we need as far as software. So the first piece of software we need is Make MKV. And the second piece of software we need is called Handbrake. As you can see on my desktop, I have both programs installed already. I've put links down in the description on where to get them. Install them both using all the defaults and you should arrive at the same point I am now. So in preparation for going further, I've already inserted a Blu-ray disc into my drive. And I'm going to go ahead now and click Make MKV. So it will start to scan the, the drive itself. And eventually we will end up with a page like this that shows the source, which is my Blu-ray player. And we can see the label of the movie that's in there currently. The first thing I'm going to want to do is open the Blu-ray disc here by clicking it and it will then start to scan the disc. Basically it's going through all the discs, all the chapters, all the different sound formats, uh, the subtitles, everything that is on that disc it will scan it and eventually we end up with a list like this which looks a bit daunting to start with. What we're interested in is the full movie. So it will be the one with the largest line of data. And we can see at the very top here, we've got 34.4 gigabytes. The rest going down are all smaller. So we're not really interested in any of those. We know that if we choose the one at the very top, 34.4 gigabytes, we're getting the complete Blu-ray movie there. So we can just unselect all of the other titles. Once we've done this, and just to give you a, an idea of exactly what is included in this 34.4 gigabytes, if we drop the little arrow down here, we can see all of the different file formats for sound, Dolby sound. We've got 5.1, we've got 7.1. We've got subtitle files going all the way down. I'm just going to leave everything as is. And then over here, I'm going to select an output folder where I want my movie to be converted to an MKV format. So here, I'm going to click the little fold icon. And I'm going to put this on my E drive because I've got loads of space on my E drive. And I'm going to right click and create a new folder and call this, uh, let's call it MKV movie. And I'm going to select that folder. Now, once I've selected the folder, I can go over onto the right here and say make MKV. I'm going to click that. And it will now start to ascertain the output size of file it's going to be, how long it's going to take. And depending on the speed of your computer, your processor, depends on how fast this is going to do it. I'm on an AMD computer. Um, it's not terribly fast, but um, eventually 
it will give us an idea of how long it's going to take to convert this Blu-ray movie into MKV. And already now we can see at the bottom there it says remaining one hour and eight minutes. So I can leave that going. Um, I'm going to come back when it's done and we'll carry on. So as we can see, copy complete, one title saved, and that took 38 minutes and 10 seconds, so even less than an hour. So let's say OK to that. I'm going to close this now. Let's go and have a look. So if you remember, I put it in my, my E drive uh, down here under MKV movie and we can see we've got our MKV here if I right click and look at the properties we can see that it's still massive it's 31.5 gigabytes in size so the next thing we want to do is compress this down and the way we do that is we use handbrake so I'm going to double click handbrake to start that program and first of all I'm going to go to file open a single video file and I'm going to navigate to where I copied it to my MKB movie on my E drive I'm going to select it I'm going to say open and it's going to scan this and there we can see it scanned it now there are lots of different ways that you can compress this uh, into different formats um, I'm going to keep it pretty simple. Um, we can see already that I've got the format set here to MP4. But of course it depends what you want to play it back on. Now if I were to say put this onto my NAS drive, which, is, which I access through my home network, then I might need to go over to here where it says presets and I might select general and I would select very fast 1080p 30 frames a second. I could downgrade it to 720p. It really depends on how big a file I want at the end of it. I'm just going to leave everything as is. Now the other thing that you might be interested in is uh, these tabs across the top here, the audio, uh, or more importantly the video. Now the the higher the constant quality number is, the lower quality the video is going to end up in. Um, now, generally, what you would normally do is set this to something like 18. Um, I'm just going to leave mine as it was, 22. Can't get it back to 22 now. But whatever you decide to do, when you're ready, you can just simply select start in code and down the bottom left there you can see it is already starting its process so it does a process pass one of two and then it does a pass two of two and then the job is done so I'll come back when this is finished so the compression is now finished that took just over an hour and one thing I forgot to mention before I uh, click start in code was where to save it. And because I didn't choose anything, it just went ahead and put it in my videos folder, which you can see down the bottom left there, save as. So basically, let's go and have a look in the videos folder. There it is there. And if I right click, well, I don't have to right click, I can just wander the mouse over it. And we can see already that it is compressed it down to 3.92 gigabytes, which I'm happy with. Let's double click it, and make sure it plays. I can hear some music. Yep, absolutely fantastic. So let's stop that for a moment. I'm just going to right click. I'm going to look at properties. I just want to double check that it is actually 1080p. 
So as we can see there where it says video, we've got the length which is 2 hours and 12 minutes. The frame width is 1918, which is just a little bit shy of 1920. And the frame height is 800 instead of the 1080. And the frame rate at 23.98 frames a second. So bear in mind, this is a reduced quality. Now, if I had have used a different method, I could have retained the 1920 by 1080, but I'm happy enough to have this down one to four gigabytes. And I'd be quite happy to transfer that onto my Android pad or my wife's iPad, and also put that on my NAS drive so that I can access it through my TV. So I hope you found that tutorial useful. Thanks for watching.